So if you guys haven't figured it out yet, this market is super, super hot. And what I'm getting right now is a lot of people asking, like, is, is right now actually a good time to buy? We have uh, people that are wanting to possibly wait because they feel like the market is going to pop. And so I want to dive deep into that. I'm going to go over some different um, case studies and scenarios to show you guys to really educate you on if now is a good time to buy, if now is a good time to sell. So I think that this information is going to be super helpful. So stay tuned. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So we are talking about how sizzling hot the market is right now. Literally what's happening right now is we're putting houses on the market and within hours, uh, we are getting multiple offer situations. We're getting offers that are above asking price. We are getting people that are willing to pay above appraised value. It literally is just a crazy market and there's not enough homes that are out there for sale for the demands that we're seeing. And uh, so what this is doing is it's predicating um, some conversations that some of our buyers are having and they are having some hesitation. One, because they don't feel like necessarily paying over market value for a home and they don't like being in bidding wars. I don't know anybody that enjoys uh, being in a bidding war situation and having to feel like they're paying more for a home. So what I want to do is talk about what that looks like from the buyer's perspective and also from the seller's perspective as well. So whenever you are in a multiple offer situation, when we're in this kind of market, it's considered a seller's market. And uh, market value indicates what somebody's willing to pay for a house. So if there's 10 people that are putting an offer in on the same house and there's one person that says, hey, I'm willing to pay $30,000 over your asking price, that then becomes the new market value for the house. And the great thing about that is, is that if you're in a neighborhood, that becomes a new comparable sale and you're in helping to increase the values in the neighborhood as well. So it's not like a matter of you overpaying for a house and then you're going to be in instant negative equity. That becomes the new market value of the home. So I just wanted to kind of share that with you. And then we'll also kind of dive into uh, some case scenarios as well. So I just want to say, let's just say, for example, that you were to purchase a home at $300,000 and you are going to be putting $15,000 down, which is typically um, in this particular scenario, you would be putting uh, 5% down. So your loan amount would be about $285,000 and your interest rate at today's rates would be about 3.25%. Little sidebar, interest rates have already started to creep up a little bit since the first of the year. At the beginning of the year, we were in the mid twos and now we're up to 3.25%. So if you were to get that home at 300,000 with this scenario here, your mortgage payment would be about $1,240 a month, not including your taxes or your escrows. So let's say that you decided to wait and you said, you know what, I want to wait and see if the market goes down. I, I have a feeling that the market's going to burst and I am just going to hold off because I don't want to be a part of this feeding frenzy. And so you're waiting for the market to drop. So let's say you decide to go ahead and rent for the time being. And you end up having to wait about four years for prices to come down about 10%. So that would be an average decrease of about 2.5% each year. And let's say you're renting a place for about $1,500 a month. So over that four-year time, you spent about $72,000. On your rent. Now that rent money is gone forever. You will never see it again. It doesn't go towards anything but you having the opportunity to stay at a place for, for that month, for that year. So you just spent uh, $72,000 in rent. And in that time frame, interest rates continued to increase. So they went from 3.25% up to 5.5%. So over that four year period of time, it's very conservative. It's an average of less than 1%. It's 0.56% a year that interest rates increase. So let's say that uh, those uh, values decreased 10%. It's four years later. So you can now get that same $300,000 home 
for $270,000. So that's great. You're saving some money there. And there is a down, you put a down payment of $13,500. You have a, a new loan amount of $256,500. And your interest rate is now at 5.5%. So your monthly payment now, instead of it being $1,240 a month, is now $1,456 a month. So not only are you spending $216 more a month for your mortgage over 30 years, which averages out to be over $77,000 more, plus the $72,000 that you spent in rent. Now, you did save $30,000 on the price of the home, and uh, your total extra expenses in this particular scenario, you're paying just shy of $120,000 more for that home than had you have went ahead and gotten into that bidding war and purchased that price a little bit above your market value. So that is just a scenario. Obviously, we don't have a crystal ball to be able to tell if you know those prices are going to go down, where what interest rates are going to do. But I can tell you that I think that um, the days of 2% interest rates are long gone, and um, we are obviously starting to see the interest rates starting to increase. So my professional opinion would be that we're going to continue to see a little bit of a rise or at least them staying the same for quite some time. So let's say that you decided to wait again. Okay, I'm going to take you through scenario two. Scenario two is that you decide, you know what, I'm going to hold off. I'm not going to be a part of this bidding war. I'm going to wait for the market, the market to soften a little bit. And once again, we don't have a crystal ball to be able to tell what's going to happen. Let's say that the property values continue to go up and interest rates go up just slightly. And you decide to hold off, let's say, a year and see what happens. So if you waited one year, and values increased 4%, which is the average of what they've been increasing. Now, this past year, we saw a significant increase in values of about 16%. But let's just say on the conservative side that uh, values went up 4%. And you, again, rented for $1,500 a month for a year. So you spent about $18,000 a year for rent. And now that same $300,000 home is now $312,000. So you're paying a little bit more for the home. Your date, your down payment is just a little bit more as well at $15,600. And you have a new loan and it's at 4%. So now your monthly mortgage is going to be $1,415 a month compared to $1,240 a month. So you're paying $174 each month over 30 years. That's $63,000. You also spent an additional $18,000 in rent that you'll never be able to recuperate. And you also spent $12,000 more on the purchase price of the home. So your total extra expenses adds up to be about $93,000 uh, versus if you would have went ahead and gone into that bidding war and just made a little bit of concessions. I know it might feel a little bit painful, but I don't know about you. This scenario here looks a lot better locking in at a $1,240 payment compared to the consequences and the added cost of waiting and spending either $93,000 or, or even close to $178,000. So what I also want to do is take you through a scenario because we actually just had some clients that went through this. I'm going to show you a case study. And uh, we've got a lot of people that are maybe wanting to do a simultaneous move. Maybe they're wanting to sell their home and they are a little bit nervous to jump out into the market and uh, they want to maybe downsize into a smaller home. I'm going to show you this case study and let you guys see what that scenario looks like and what they were able to do with this particular scenario in this market. Okay, so this is a case study of Bob and Sue. I'm going to change their names for their protection. And um, Bob and Sue, they bought their home in 2014 for $288,000. So they ended up having a loan of $273,000, and their interest rate was 4.25%, which was still a great rate back then. And their, their monthly payment, not including escrows, and um, 
taxes was about thirteen forty six a month, and we just successfully sold their home for four hundred and ten thousand dollars. So they had about one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars worth of equity from the sale of their home. Now they're empty nesters; they're wanting to downsize, and so what they did was they ended up going and buying a home for three hundred thousand dollars. They put their equity towards their purchase. And they now have a loan at $175,000 with an interest rate of 3.25%. So their new mortgage payment is $762 a month. And they're saving over $584 a month from their previous mortgage. So I just want to show that as an example to let you know that you absolutely have options. And it still is a great time to consider selling. It's a great time to consider buying. The biggest difference maker is really the interest rates if you're getting a loan. Now, let's say that you are going to be a cash buyer. Okay. It really doesn't affect you too much, right? If you are looking to sell and buy in the same market, then you really are, you're, you're going to be, um, doing kind of like an equal exchange, I guess you could say, unless of course you are, um, because values would be high when you're selling and they also would be high when you're buying. Um, some of the be benefits and advantages would be if you're selling in a high market and then you're going and purchasing in another geographic area that is uh, lower, you know, prices and inventories more. So it really doesn't affect you much more if you're a cash buyer. It really, really affects you if you are getting financing. So I hope that that makes sense. So all of this to say, is it worth getting out there and getting in the market right now? And my answer would be a resounding yes. On the seller side, you are able to sell at the top of the market. And interest rates are still at a low enough rate that you're able to take advantage of those low interest rates. If you wait too long, you will miss out on those low interest rates. And that can definitely affect you what you're paying on a monthly basis. So the other thing, too, is once again, if you're renting, you're never going to get that money back. So I want you to add up how many months you decide to rent while you're holding off on purchasing something and take that money into the equation of how much it's costing you. And would you rather put that money into a home purchase where the values on an average are increasing 4% each year? That is a great investment. So I hope that this information is helpful. We would absolutely love to be able to have a one-on-one -on -one consultation with you, walk you through what your best options are, and be able to guide you in the right direction. Be sure to check us out on our, at our website at brandysells.com or give us a call as well, and we would love to help you. You guys take care.